Hi, I'm Haggai from Consumer Physics, and I'd like to introduce you to SIO, uh, to the SDK, and to what you can do with the SDK. So let's get started. So here's SIO. It's got two parts. It's got the sensor and the cover. Uh, the cover protects the sensor, and it's also used to calibrate the device. Now the sensor has got the uh, optical head. On the optical head there's the uh, molecular sensor, the temperature sensor and the illumination source. We have a button and on the back side we have a USB port and the charging light. So the essence of how SIO works is that it shines a light on a sample. The light is reflected off of that sample. It's captured by the molecular sensor which then extracts the uh, molecular fingerprint of that sample. Next, I would like to introduce you to SIO SDK. This SDK enables you to develop molecular sensing models and it also provides you with APIs with which you can develop mobile apps for iOS and Android based on these models. The SDK lets you create and collect data collections, uh, scrub this data and also analyze this data, analyze the spectra. The SDK lets you develop two types of molecular sensing models classification models and estimation models. Classification models, as their name suggests, help classify samples. So, for example, a certain pill versus another pill from a different brand name, apples versus oranges. Estimation models provide certain attributes of samples. For example, the level of sugar in apples or the percent of fat in cheese. So what's included in the SIO SDK? First and foremost, obviously the SIO molecular sensor. SIO Lab, which is the web app where after signing in you can set up the data collections, scrub the data, analyze the spectra, and eventually generate the molecular sensing models. SIO Mobile Lab is the mobile app with which you scan your samples and where you can also do some data scrubbing. The mobile APIs are the APIs and libraries for iOS and Android which enable you to develop mobile apps that communicate with the SIO molecular sensor and with the database of models. And last but not least, the support resources for developers which include the online guide, the forum, videos such as this one and other resources and also the email support where you can submit your questions or comments and get a response from our support team. Now the SDK workflow depends on whether you intend to develop molecular sensing models, mobile apps, or both. So the flow on this slide outlines the steps for developing both. Steps one and two are for developing the models, and if you're only interested in developing mobile apps, you'll skip directly to step three. Step one is about collecting data. In this step, you gather the data for your experiment. This includes defining what you want to test and the attributes that are of interest to you. For example, sugar level, uh, country of origin, fat percentage. This step also includes scanning your samples and filling in the corresponding attribute values to your scan results. So for example, if you're interested in classifying oil types, like olive oil and canola oil, you first define one or more attributes such as oil type and oil quality scan your oil samples and for each scan result you will provide its type and its quality step two is about developing the models themselves once you have the data collections from the previous step you will analyze this data using a graphic user interface and apply a variety of algorithms, perspectives, and other tools that are part of the SDK in order to create a molecular sensing model that can be used to interpret scans. So using the OILS example again, you will analyze the OIL records you created in step one until you're confident that you have a model that can interpret OILS the way you intended it to work. Step three is about using these models creating or developing mobile applications based on molecular sensing models. So once a model is available for use, you can develop apps for iOS and Android using our mobile lab libraries. 
and these apps will communicate with the psi-molecular sensor to get scan results and can be based on one or multiple molecular sensing models. The models may be the ones developed by you, as described in the previous steps, or models developed by consumer physics or other developers uh, in the SIO developer community. So that's it. Thanks for watching this introduction to SIO and the SIO SDK. See you later.